Rockstars, welcome to Virtual Sister Real Talk. This is the Rockstar VA Sarah, and for today is gonna be an interesting day and another productive day. Shape, dahil meron na naman tayong free training, and I'm gonna teach you and give you information about email management. So you're gonna learn a lot from this video. Bago yan, ang gusto ko magpasalamat sa lahat ng nagwatch ng vlog ko, the first VA training na pinavide ko, a free VA crush course. Ang daming nag-message sa akin, maraming maraming salamat. Sobrang nakakatunaw ng puso and sobrang nakakamotivate. And now, you're up for a treat! Because that is right. And of course, bibigyan ko pa rin kayo ng mga rockstar tips and kung ano yung mga pwede mong ilagay na skills sa CV mo kapag bago ka pa lang na VA. So don't forget to watch this vlog until the end and share it and subscribe. So if you have any questions, don't forget to leave a comment in this video. So that's it for me. Start the video! Management 101 and I'm sure na excited kayong matutunan nito. I'm going to discuss a lot of things. I'm going to share a lot of information. Siyempre, hindi mawawala ang ating rockstar tips and of course, kung ano yung mga pwede mong ilagay na skills under email management service. So this is uh, very, um, ito yung isa sa mga trabaho na alam kong kayang-kaya mo and that's the reason why I created this training crash course. So for email management, this is very important. If you have a notebook, take notes or you can do a screenshot para meron kang copy and you can just review or pwede mo rin ulit-ulitin itong video na to para at least ma-refresh ka sa mga important, important na information. So let's start! Okay, so let's have our introduction. So email is a great servant, but a very poor master. Many people basically use their inbox as their to-do list, and this ultimately results in poor email productivity. They will open an email, read it, and then mark it as unread in order to come back to it later. They are then forced to constantly scan their inbox looking for unread emails that they have not responded to. Clearly, this is double handling of emails and a lot of time is not very reliable. So, usually, nangyayari yan na babasahin mo yung email, tapos i-click mo lang yung unread, tapos babalikan mo. So, pa parang pa pabalik-balik ka lang sa email mo instead of just when you click on the email, then you just read it. Tapos na. Especially yung mga emails na kailangan mo lang naman basahin, no need to respond to. So, that's like, you know, less than, um, in less time para basahin mo lang yung emails. And really, lalo na kung hindi naman siya ganun ka-importante. You don't really have to, alam mo yun, like, just click on red and then balikan mo lang. Balikan mo na lang kapag hindi mo pa talaga siya nabasa ng buo. So, that's really a waste of time. Some people will even forward old emails to themselves in order to bring emails back to the top of their inbox. So, di ba? Oh, it's it's no. just so crazy na ganun yung ginagawa. Pero I have to admit na at one point, nagawa ko rin yan kapag nakakalimutan ko na babasahin ko tapos is, isusearch ko yung message na yon or email na yon. Tapos, ang gagawin ko, isesend ko ulit sa akin para lang nandun ulit siya sa ibabaw ng inbox ko, di ba? Parang nakakaloka kasi pa paulit-ulit tapos ini-email ko lang rin yung sarili ko. So, that's that's really not, alam mo yun, that's not a good practice. Email can be a great distraction, of course, and we know that not every email we receive is important. That is true. However, given that the email is now the communication medium of choice, we cannot simply ignore them. And since so much of our work is now delegated to us via email, it is imperative that important emails do not get lost in your inbox. Unfortunately, most people simply don't have a good system for managing their emails effectively. So, yan ang um, isa sa mga challenges ng mga magiging clients natin or clients na meron tayo. Na sometimes if they hire you na mag-manage ng emails nila, ibig sabihin nung talagang sobrang uh, hindi siya organized and they need your help or they need our help, mga VAs na i-manage, i-organize yung email inbox nila. And that's really, you know, isa to sa mga trabaho na ayaw gawin ng clients because it's wasting their time and at the same time, and at the same time, mas gusto nilang mag-focus sa mas importanting 
trabaho nila or mas gusto nilang mag-focus sa mga importanteng bagay sa business nila instead of just sitting for hours and reading like hundreds of emails. So that's one of the reason or top reason kung bakit nag-hire ng email management, VA email management. Next, how do we manage email effectively? So checking email. So checking your email regularly during the day can be an effective way to keep your inbox at manageable levels. One strategy you can use is to check email only at set points during the day. For instance, you can do it, you know, in the morning or before lunch or at the end of the day. So, pwede mo namang schedule yung pagbabasa ng mga emails mo. Note, clearly in some roles, you will have to check email on a regular basis, especially if your business uses email as its main communication tool. As with all of these strategies, use your judgment so based on your circumstances. So as a VA, email management, hindi talaga siya applicable na schedule mo lang. Pero usually what I do, especially kung yung trabaho ko involves, uh, involves sa mga emails, so syempre every now and then, I check lalo na kapag uh, urgent yung mga emails, I make sure that I respond immediately. Pero other than that, um, it's, alam mo yun, it's parang manageable na kailangan ko lang i-check kapag merong emails, notifications sa, um, sa laptop ko o kaya sa phone ko. So, I make sure, lalo na pag galing sa client mo. It is, napag-usapan natin to sa previous blogs na communication is very important. Kapag nag-message si client especially kung active talaga siya na mag-email at mag-send ng mga uh, ng mga communication niya sa via email then it's important to always read it if possible real time email so meron tinatawag na 2 minute rule so if the email will take less less than 2 minutes to read and reply to then take care of it right now if it's if it's not a high priority the idea behind this is that if it takes less than two minutes to action it takes longer to read and then store the task away to do later then it would to just take care of the task now right Kung less than two minutes lang naman so gawin mo na for emails that will take longer than two minutes to read or respond to schedule time on your calendar or add this as an action on your to-do list to do later. Most email programs allow you to highlight, flag, or star messages that need responses. So utilize these handy features whenever you can. So meron mga options sa uh, Gmail na pwede mo siyang star, lagyan ng star, or kaya flag. So ako, I usually use the star uh, option or feature para alam ko kung ilan yung re-replyan ko for today. So ganun, kunyari, nag-email si clients, then i-star ko muna siya, lalo na kung medyo matatagalan ka or more than two minutes siya. Now, the tip is many of us also get lots of internal notification. So these are those FYI emails from the corporate office or from the team members who want to keep us in the loop. If you see your name in the CC field instead of the to field, chances are it's on FYI emails. So consider filing it in a to read folder and tackle it when you have time. So, bibigyan ko kayo ng example. I have an old email here. So, pag nag-compose ako ng email, so, kung yung email yun ay naka-address sa to, then it's something that is addressed to you. Pero kung naka-CC ka lang sa email na yun, so, that's what you call the FYI email. So, ibig sabihin, gusto ko lang i-copy. So, by the way, CC is carbon, carbon copy. Yung ibig sabihin niya. So, kapag naka-copy ka nun, gusto ko lang i-involve dun sa email thread or email communication. Pero kung naka-BCC ka, which is blind CC, ibig sabihin, um, hindi alam ng mga naka-CC or naka uh, kung kanino mo sin or kung sino yung nag-send or kanino naka-address yung email hindi nila alam na naka-blind CC ka kaya nga siya blind anyways so hindi nila malalaman yon so say for example nag-email ako sa client and then naka-blind carbon cap copy yung isang VA ko hindi malalaman ni client na nakakopy yung VA ko. Ma uh, manonotify notify lang yung VA ko na merong ganong email na in-address ko sa client. So, 
is something na pwede mong gamitin as a feature, especially pag hindi naman kailangan malaman ng ibang nakakopy sa email na binlive mo yung isa siguro sa mga involved sa email or you know something na kailangan din nilang malaman. So those are the features that we can use here in. By the way, itong old email ko, wag niyo lang pansinin, puro food panda at para sa lagaman, ang laman yan. So, ala lang yan. Um, kaya may laman. Anyway, so that's how we, we use the emails when it comes to the tips. Organizing emails first. Set up a simple filing system to help you manage your email. You can use broad categories, titles, titled action items, waiting, reference, and archives. If you're able to stay on top of your folders, particularly action and waiting folders, you could use them as an informal to-do list for the day. If four categories sounds too simplistic for your needs, you can set up a more detailed system system for instance you can create a folder for every project that you're working on or have a set folder for each of the clients or sales reps the advantage when you create specific folders for processing email is that it makes it easier to search for past email instead of scouring your entire email system you can simply search in that particular folder so yun yung usually na ginagawa ko i i create a sep uh, individual folder para sa lahat ng mga clients ko and then merong mga subfolders para sa mga task or yung ibang mga team members ng under my client para mas organize siya and then naka-filter na lahat yon So, I'm going to show you an example of filtering your emails. So, let's go back to my old email. So, ito na naman siya. Ang mga kupanda na panay email sa akin. Anyways, so I'm going to create. So for example, ang client ko is si food panda. So I can, I can create it. I can create um a filter starting from the search email or pwede kong i-click tong tatlong button dito and then filter messages like this. So from lahat ng emails, mag-filter under the sender. So si food panda, kunwari siya yung client natin and then pwede kong i-create filter. I just click on create filter. And then, skip ko yung inbox para hindi sila mag-flood kasi automatic pupunta siya sa folder na gagawin ko. And then, apply. Apply. So, you can click on choose label. Since walang label, I can just create parang a main label. So, say for example, food delivery. Food delivery. Okay. And then, i-create ko siya. So, under na siya ng food delivery and then also apply filter to matching conversations and then create filter. Okay, so using rules. So, for such programs or email programs such as Outlook and Gmail, it allows you to establish rules that sort email into a particular folder as soon as it comes in. For instance, you might get several emails per day that notify you of sales that your company has made you want to receive this because you want to see what's happening but you don't want them clutter in your inbox this is where you can set up a rule in your email program that moves emails with say sale notification in the subject line straight to the sales made folder as soon as they come in this means that you don't need to manually file these emails and allow you to keep all of these emails in one folder. So, meron mga options for rules. Pwede mo siyang gamitin sa Gmail mo. So, email management and ano ba yung mga kasali doon. So, just to give you a heads up, yung mga i-discuss ko, pwede natin, pwede nyong ilagay sa CV or resume nyo. So, pag tinanong kung ano yung kaya mong gawin um, as a virtual assistant email management specialist, so, pwede mo siyang isama. So, let's go. Tax Task creation. So, we, Iowa VAs, are trained to identify emails in your inbox that need action from your side 
or from your team. So rather than leaving such emails in your inbox for you to deal with later, VAs can turn this into task items and include all the appropriate information so that you can more effectively deal with such emails. So as a VA, pwede natin i-forward sa mga clients kung ano yung mga dapat nilang gawin sa mga emails. So say for example, uh, meron mag email kay client that needs response so you can just simply notify your client and tell them kung ano yung pwede nilang respond or kailangan ba talagang applyan or re response kailangan ba ng response right away so you're actually creating a task for your client para um, alam na nila hindi na nila kailangan pa like to go like in depth of what the email is or kung ano yung content ng email but they can just you know like rely on you na Okay, so yeah, uh, client, this is, uh, we got this email, so you can reply by just uh, answering the link or something. So, important yan. All right, so next we have email review. So, there is usually an assortment of email that you receive every day, ranging from important ones to not so important ones. VAs can review your daily emails and prioritize the ones that need your attention first and filter out the not so important ones that you can deal with later. So in this way, you can get a head start on dealing with all the important emails. So kaya ng VA na reviewin yung mga emails and then to actually like sort kung ano yung pinaka importante or urgent na kailangan replyan or kailangan uh, babasa ni client at ano rin yung mga pwede namang gawin within the day na hindi naman rush so that's very important to um, at least review and inform the clients now uh, you have like five important emails that you need to reply to first thing in the morning stuff like that so kaya kaya miyan as a VA next we have temp template creation so many emails require a standard response on and VAs can help you create templates of emails to be sent in such instances. So in this way, you do not need to waste time crafting new email to reply to emails that requires a standard response. With, with this service, you will not be weighed down by having to reply to simple emails every day. So um, I mentioned in the uh, previous vlog ko na maraming kamakuha sa Google na mga standard uh, email responses like yung professional just make sure na yung grammar mo at saka yung pinaka um, just make your email rep response short pero at uh, direct to the point so ganun so you can actually help the client uh, create email templates para hindi na rin sila mahihirapan so what i actually do is what kapag gagawa ko ng emails and meron ng mga templates for standard responses, sinisave ko lang siya sa draft ng email and then kung kailangan ko na siyang replyan or kailangan ko na siyang gamitin para magreply sa isang email, then I just copy the draft templates na meron sa email mismo. So, kaya-kaya mo yan. So, next we have email sorting rules creation. So, na-mention ko yan earlier na pwede kang gumawa ng rules sa Google email. So, pwede pwede yan para mas convenient saka mas mabilis. It actually saves time kapag gumagawa ka ng rules sa Gmail. So, VAs can help you create effective and efficient email sorting rules that transform the look and feel of your inbox, making everything more organized and easier to deal with. So, kaya kaya mo yan. There's an option in Gmail to create uh, rules sa May setting part. So, if you look um, on, on your email, you can just check on it. And next, cleaning and organizing inboxes. So, yan. Kaya kaya mo yan. Kaya kaya mo linisin yung inbox. Um, uh, like I mentioned uh, earlier, is sobrang busy ng mga clients na sobrang matatambahan na sila ng mga emails. Minsan makikita mo yung mga unread emails nila nasa 1,000 plus. Meron akong mga naging clients na ganyan. Umaabot ng 36,000 unread emails and syempre parang what if kung yung merong mga emails doon na sobrang importante sa client hindi wala lang talagang siyang time para basahin or i-replyan uh, so kailangan kailangan nila ng tutulong para i-organize yung inbox nila at syempre linisin linisin in a way yung mga spam so kailangan mo it's either delete it or you can ask uh, the client kung ano gusto niyang gawin sa mga spams, yung mga subscriptions. So, importante yan. Responding to non-essential emails on your behalf. So, 
pwede mo rin siyang gawin as long as the client uh, permits you to do it, to reply uh, sa mga clients. Minsan si client yung magsasabi ko anong i-reply, tapos ikaw na lang yung magko-compose ng uh, email content para i-reply sa, sa email na na-receive nyo. So, many emails require a standard response and can be dealt with by VAs. In instance, VAs can respond to non-essential emails and send them to the pertinent people on your behalf without you having to worry about anything. So, na, uh, sa previous clients ko, usually, I just informed them na may nag-reply dito, anong sasagot ko, and then they're just gonna give me an idea kung anong i respond and then ako na yung magkocompose. So, um, kailangan nila yon kailangan nila merong taga-reply, syempre pag meron silang ginagawang mas importante kaysa sa pag-reply sa email, they're just, men they're just gonna tell you kung anong i-reply and then it's really up to you paano mag-reply and uh, the best advice is to actually use a standard template para mas safe and syempre yung um, wordings mo and grammar, so importante yan guys. And lastly, we have following up. So VAs are fully capable of following up on your communications with current customers and potential clients, thus saving you a lot of time that can instead be put to a greater use. So usually, ina-assign sa yun ni client na uh, mag-follow up sa mga emails. So you have to really make sure that you're using all the features ng Gmail mo para talagang maayos mo. Now take note, guys, w when you're managing email, it means that the client is giving you the access to their email. So, sobrang importante yan. Buhay nila yan ng email nila. And that's very, very important. So, kailangan talaga yung security at saka talaga yung passwords and all should be safe. Make the client feel na safe yung mga passwords sa'yo and you're not just gonna give it out to anyone or just, you know, share to anyone. So, importante na mapagkakatiwalaan ka ng client pagdating sa pag uh, sa security and confidentiality. Now, with this, uh, uh, this slide is, it's important to actually inform the client kung kailangan mo bang i-follow up. Minsan si client mismo magsasabi na I want you to follow up on that next week or tomorrow or alam mo pala na pag meron silang inaabangan na alam mo yun, when it comes to business, which is important. So, kailangan mo talagang i-take down notes. So, what I use, I actually use um, notepad or minsan mga post-its. Merong mga uh, apps sa uh, uh, website or so magagamit mo talaga siya. Just make sure that pag merong binilin talaga sa'yo si client pagdating sa email, you have to really take note and alam mo yun, follow up. And this is one thing na alam kong kayang kaya mo. Okay, so let's proceed to email tips. So, important ito guys. So, make sure that you take note or you take a screenshot. So, let's start. So, email profile photo. Ano ba dapat yung itsura ng photo mo pagdating sa email? Now, if I will give you an example, ito kunyari ang aking email. This is an old email that I have. So, make sure that this photo, itong nasa kantong to, dapat kita yung face nyo. So, importante. Kasi yung iba kasi, ang ginagamit minsan logo, okay naman kung yung email is for business. But if it's your personal email or uh, let's say you're marketing your yourself, then importante na, na picture mo talaga yung ilalagay mo sa email mo. So, if a picture is worth a thousand words, what does your professional photo says about you? On a professional networking site such as LinkedIn, your picture may affect the opportunities that come your way, especially if you haven't met the other party in the person. So, usually, hindi natin kilala or nakikita yung mga ka, ka replyan natin sa email. So, it's important na makakatulong na makita yung photo mo, profile photo mo sa Gmail mo. Just, just a reminder though, it has to be professional. Dapat present. So, katulad yan, ako guys, syempre, may see yung buho ko, pero yung dating email photo ko, mahaba siya and bloody pa. So, kailangan ko siyang i-update. And also, it should be focused image. So, dapat nakatingin ka, hindi ka naka-side view, or medyo yung, ano mo, naka-half, pang, ano yung pang aura. So, dapat talaga prof professional. Siyempre, lalo na kung ginagamit mo yung email mo sa business or sa pagkuha ng mga clients, pag-respond sa mga clients or customers. So, it's important to talagang nakafocus sa'yo yung profile photo. It should be straight, like straight nakatingin ka talaga sa camera. And of course, dapat medyo smile naman dyan. Para hindi ka naman mukhang suplada or hindi ka naman mukhang, alam mo yun, like poker face. So, kailangan friendly. Kasi nga, we're marketing ourselves as virtual assistants. So, it is important to actually, alam mo yun, may maram, na picture mo pa lang, maramdaman na nila na 
okay to. Parang, parang friendly siya. Parang, ano, siya yung Miss Congeniality. Parang ganun. So, importante yan, guys. An example na profile photo. So, you have to, you know, at least kita. Itong nasa gilid na to. Parang hindi ko siya nakikita. Hindi ko nakikita yung face. But this is much better. Makita mo na yung face. Malayo pa lang. Makikita mo na sa kanto ng uh, Gmail. So, pag chinakya ng uh, client mo, syempre makikita niya kagad yung face mo. Ayan. Alam ba yan? So, we have to be very particular pagdating sa mga photos natin. Okay. Next step is personal emails versus business emails. I've mentioned this in my previous video. Uh, it's important na meron kang personal email, meron ka business email, especially if you're dealing with clients and customers. Mas maganda kung sa business email. I like with personal emails kasi usually pag personal Gmail mo kasi yan yung mga ginagamit mo to sign up kapag nagsasubscribe ka sa mga apps like you know, Netflix or you know stuff like that, Spotify. So, Yan yung personal image, uh, yan yung personal email na ginagamit mo. So, alam mo yun, parang um, it's gonna go separate. So, but if you're working with clients, syempre mas importante kung meron kang separate business Gmail. Next is your email signature. So, importante yan guys, hindi lang siya, alam mo yun, parang it gives, eh, para siyang trademark mo pagdating sa Gmail. So, ano ba yung mga dapat na nasa, G, nasa email signature mo? First and last name, affiliation info. So, importante yan kung ano yung, uh, ano yung position mo, anong company ka galing. So, it should be there. Your secondary contact info, especially kung, kasi minsan kasi yung mga clients, they're active to just calling or yung iba naman active sa emails or yung iba gusto lang nilang tumawag sa phone mo. So, nandiyan yung secondary contact info which is your contact number or kung meron ka pa ibang email na gusto mong isama but not specific to that email, kung yung email na gamit mo. Kasi yun nga yun eh, di ba nagre-reply na nga sila sa email mo. So, dapat ibang contact information yan. Next is call to action. Bibigyan ko na examples na. We have booking links. So, kung nagpaprovide ka ng service, maganda rin na nasa email signature mo yung link para automatic or diretsyo na sila sa pagbubook. And then, syempre, yung iba merong industry disclaimer or legal requirements na kalagay naman dyan. Uh, say, for example, um, you're a doctor, so nakalagay dun yung license number mo or something. And then, photo or logo. Um, logo is for business emails and then your photo is for your personal email. So, choice mo pa rin yan. Pero I suggest, go with your self. Yung, yung photo mo talaga, hindi logo. And yung iba, naglalagay ng business code, which is okay. Kasi para syempre, business code, para rin siyang, parang quote mo sa sarili mo, your life code. So, it kind of makes sense kapag alam mo yun, kinikilatis ka ng mga client, of course, you're giving that an expression, bakit mo pinili yung quote na yun, syempre, it's something that you actually believe, and it's your, alam mo yun, it's something that, you know, you, you, you put value pagdating sa quote na nilalagay mo, pero hindi naman siya necessary, so yun. So, how to write an email signature? So, number one is you have to emphasize your name, affiliation, and secondary contact information. You keep the colors simple and consistent. Yung iba sobrang simple lang siya. Yung color, yung iba naman plain lang and that's fine. Use the signs hierarchy. So, merong mga, yung pagdating sa fonts mo, syempre dapat mas malaki yung font mo sa name and sa position mo. And then other information can be just less, uh, parang medyo smaller font lang. So, pwede yan. Make links trackable. So, kapag nag naglalagay ka ng mga um, social media links mo sa email signature, dapat pag kinlik nila yun, automatic, dapat nandun na sila sa social media platform. Or say, for example, website, dapat clickable siya. Dapat may ano talaga, direction ni links. Next, use space dividers. That's important para hindi talaga siya, ano yun, hindi siya confusing. So, importante yan. Include an international prefix in your contact number. So, yung iba, naglalagay ng mga prefix like, you know, yung area code sa US, pwede kang maglalagay ng area code sa, sa country mo or something para if you're really going out international na gusto mo talagang magkaroon ng client all over the world, then I, that's important. 
merong iba na talagang they call you directly sa phone mo. So, that will be helpful. And make your design mobile friendly. So, merong options dyan. By the way, meron sa Google na you'll just enter, um, you'll just enter the information. It, it automatically creates your email signature. Okay din yun. Merong mga free links or websites. So, I'm just going to post it in the description box. So, this is a sample of, um, Email signature. So if you notice, sobrang plain lang ng mga colors nila. This is the click clickable one. Kung gusto mo magpabook, yung iba naman nagpo-post din ng videos para, alam mo yan, if you're like marketing your services or, or say for example, you're an artist and you just want them to have a glimpse of what services you can offer. So pwede ka rin mag-attach mag ng video katulad nito. And then this one, the color is just parang sobrang simple lang pero all the information are there so this one okay then kitang kita so that's those are sample templates okay so next another tip vacation responder so sobrang importante to especially if you're gonna be out for let's say two days or more so importante na you have to maximize the use of vacation responder. If you're planning to head out on a vacation or step away from your office for a few days, creating creating an out-of-office autoresponder email message is essential. So, napaka-importante is kasi nga yung mga clients natin, marami na silang ginagawa, marami silang iniisip, na stress sila. Minsan nakakalimutan nila na, ay, nagpaalam ka na pala sa kanila na you're gonna be out for say three days or something. So, mawawala. So, that you have to still notify your client. Uh, this is a sample template of the vacation responder. So, pwede mo siyang gamitin. Again, when it comes to templates, there are a lot of professional and standard templates na pwede mong gamitin. So, if you go to this email, you just click on this setting. See all settings. Tapos dito sa bandang baba, ayan ang vacation responder. So, if you're going to um, create a vacation responder or notification, you can click on vacation responder on. And then, yung first day na mawawala ka, say for example, today, babakasyon ka, magpunta, magbe-beach mode ka or wow. something, or pupunta ka sa staycation for three days, you can also put this, when will you come back? So, say for example, September or Friday, okay, so one week. And then, you can put a title here, like out of the office. Tapos, lalagay ko ulit yung date, so August 31. To September 3. So, ibig sabihin, September 4 ka pa, magre-report sa client. And then, you can put your message here, like, I will be out of the office for stuff like that. So, pwede mo siya. And then, you can save change. And automatic na siya na magbibigay ng notification sa lahat ng mag email sa sa'yo. So, that's important. Again, I have to remind you guys, kahit gumawa ka ng vacation responder, you still have to notify your client a day before. Just giving uh, him a heads up na, oh, wala ako ha, three days. So, baka kasi naman nawala na naman sa isip ni client yon. Nangyayari yun guys. So, it's best to actually notify them. This is an example. So, I took a screenshot. So, pwede mo na siyang gawin. Okay, just don't forget to click the vacation responder on. And then the dates, the subject, and then your message. So, you can update that. And then click on save changes. So, you can also have the option to only send a response to people in my contact. So, say for example, nagtatrabaho ka sa isang company and then um, you just have to notify yung mga kasama mo sa company, yung mga nasa contacts mo. Kasi for sure, you have the email address of the vice president or say for example, the manager or the graphic artist or the HR. So, you can click on that kung gusto mo, sila lang yung notify mo. And hindi na yung iba pang nag-email. So, you can also have an option.
Okay, so next is Grammarly. This is my tip. Ito talaga guys, kasi syempre nagkakabali din tayo sa grammar. Kapag nagko-compose tayo, kala natin, ang galing-galing natin, pero mali-mali pala yung grammar. So this is a cloud-based writing assistant that reviews spelling, grammar, punctuation, clarity, engagement, and delivery mistakes. So ia-address mo yan. Samples, kapag gumagawa ka ng email, as long as you can turn on, ano actually siya, um, Google Chrome extension. So, just search it in your, um, in your Google and then there's an option to um, activate the extension. It's a Chrome extension. Pwede siya, uh, pwede siya sa, sa account mo. So, for example, so this one guys, I've installed the Grammarly. So, nandito sa taas, yung color green. So, naka-on siya. Pwede na siya, automatic na siya. So, every time you compose an email or kahit ano, pwede rin documents, i-correct niya yan. Sobrang, sobrang helpful ng Grammarly. I'm telling you guys, talagang maayos nga pati spelling and all. So, and kahit na gumawa ka ng, say for example, a document, hindi lang siya sa Gmail, pwede rin siya sa document, automatic na yan, i-update ka and it's really, it really gonna help you pagdating sa pagkakompose ng, um, ng uh, response sa email. Next, another thing na sobrang helpful, Boomerang. Boomerang for Gmail. So, you can write an email now and schedule it to be sent automatically at the perfect time. So, sobrang helpful to, lalo na kapag mag email ka sa client mo ng hapon dito sa Philippines pero kasi mamayang gabi pa yung umaga sa kanila so you can schedule that lalo na kung medyo may gagawin ka rin baka makalimutan mo pwede mo na siyang gawin agad and you can schedule kailan mo ipapadala yung email and what time so you can have the option so again this is a Chrome extension pwede mo siyang i-activate you can just download and it automatically activates in your Gmail. It's free, by the way, same as with Grammarly. So, click mo lang yung nasa screenshot. You can click kailang mo gusto magpadala ng email and anong oras pwede mo siyang schedule. So, that can be an option. Okay, so, we discuss next Gmail features and functions. Okay, so Gmail function. So Google will help you write an email. So minsan kapag nagre-reply ka sa email, automatic siya na nagpo-provide ng mga kasunod na words. And it helps kasi it, it, it's it's going to be it's going to save your time and meron talaga siyang smart compose suggestion. Meron siyang feature, may feature sa Gmail niyan. Um try niyo yan guys kapag uh, try niyo mag-reply sa email and while you're composing it, it automatically completes your sentence. So, nakakatulong talaga siya, guys. Okay, next option, pwede ka rin mag sa email. So, pwede rin yan, reminder. So, there, here's a screenshot. So, there is an option to snooze. Pag gusto mong i-remind ka na kailangan mo itong replyan o kailangan mong balikan o kailangan mong i-follow up, there's an option to snooze at a specific time. So, may option yan. Okay, next, meron din option to delete the access or the details, yung mga um, in-access mo, say for example, nag-login ka sa Gmail sa phone and then sa tablet and then say for example, uh, sa dalawang laptop and then dalawang desktop and then hindi mo na ginagamit yung, uh, yung access sa yun or laptop or say for example, yung phone. Um, hindi mo na siya ginagamit, you can actually just delete all the Gmail access in the device. For security purpose, may option yan. Okay. Next, Gmails also have a specific sender in two clicks. So, pwede yan, pwede mo siyang hanapin. Like, um, if you're searching for a certain person na nag-email sa'yo way, way back, gusto mong lang balikan or gusto mo lang yeah, i-check yung isa sa mga emails niya, you can have this option to find that specific person. So, sobrang helpful yan. 
Next, you can also access your Gmail without an internet connection. So, kaya tayo may offline na option. So, you can research how it works, pero yan yung isa sa mga advantage ng Gmail. And you can also have an option to unsend your Gmail. So, feeling mo na nasend mo sa maling tao, you can actually click the undo para hindi na nila ma-receive yung email. So, okay din yan dito guys. So, minsan, alam mo yun, parang feeling mo meron kang nakalimutan yung email or meron kang, or mali yung napagsendan mo. You can have the option to undo it. Yes, you can also have, you can have, have the access to block. Diba? Dati sa Messenger lang yan, sa Facebook, sa chat. Ngayon, kahit sa email, pwede ka na rin mag-block. I have to be honest with you, minsan meron talagang mga spam, meron talagang, alam mo yun, mag-email mag, mag sa'yo ng nonsense or alam mo yun, hindi naman business related or hindi mo kilala. You can actually block this person. So, you won't receive any emails. Kaya, may option yan. Okay, so there, meron kang option na gumawa ng task mo, just a reminder. So, pwede mo na rin notepad ang Gmail. So, meron yung option na ganyan. And of course, creating new label para uh, naka-organize lahat ng emails mo. So, you can have that option and last thing you can also have a color coded pagdating sa gmail mo para pag nakita mo na itong color na to alam mo na kung kanino galing yung email so that is so creative and witty and very convenient itong mga uh, features and tips and alam mo yun marami pa marami pa guys you can research it pero ito yung madalas kong ginagamit para sa client ko Okay, so this is an example, alright? Alright, so this is an example of my old Gmail. So, ito yung uh, options, so yung mga features. You can create uh, labels dito. You can also uh, do a Google Meet um, meeting. You can join here. You can add contacts dito sa may bandang baba. There is a... Uh, a chat that you can have an option, even call and add contacts. So, sa Hangout yan, it's a different app but it's uh, connected to your Gmail. So, pwede yan. And then, you can go to settings. So, napapansin nyo yung aking background. Pwede mo siyang paltan kung ano ang gusto mo. So, ito yung mga quick settings. You can also do the default layout. You can do comfortable option you can do a compact so mas ano siya i do default para medyo may spacing siya okay you can also customize kung anong gusto mo uh, and read first para makikita mo kagad yung mga hindi pa nababasa ng mga emails or you can do star so say for example this one is important i click the star in this email and then pag pumunta ako dito sa left area i can see ko ano yung mga nalagyan ko ng star which means that i need to reply or it would take more than two minutes for me to reply or do uh, the task so this feature is very important okay you can also do no split, you can do right at the inbox so pag nireload natin yan so mag update siya so pwede yan, pwede ganyan yung itsura so you can just typically customize your gmail so pwede siyang you know, so I would do the no split still okay and then if medyo Ibang features pa, you can go to see all settings. Ayan, dyan yung general. Okay. So, you can create here in the signature. Where you can add, say, for example, and. And then, I would put my name here, my details, yung mga um, important details para sa email signature mo. 
and then you can um, click on this para automatic siyang magkakaroon ng email. So, say for example, Anne de la Cruz. And then, um, say for example, company is Rise Up. And then, uh, Marketing Assistant. And then, your number. Building... sample and then probably a website like riseup.com pero dapat meron siyang hyperlink para clickable siya so ayan siya pwede ka nang maglagay ng pictures or something since naka default na to na okay, and so when i create an email ay, is a save mo pa pala siya. Save mo muna yan. And then when I create an email, automatic, ito na yung signature. Okay? So, hindi naman talaga kailangan na bonggang bongga yung email signature. Yung, as long as ito na yung important details, then that is, and you're good to go. So, alam mo, the simple, the better. Then you can create labels, your inbox rules, you can do that. Accounts, ito yung offline, so you can en enable offline mail. So, pwede ka pa rin makareceive ng email kahit wala kang internet. So, ayan. So, basically, yun yung mga ginagawa ko. And then here at the left, you have the calendar, you have the keep, you have the task. So, pag meron akong gustong gawin, parang ito na rin yung notepad ko. So, I create this, or I use this all the time. So, say for example, respond, respond to client one email. So, yeah, pwede ko lagyan ng date later, and then probably 11 a.m. Okay, so, tapos pag nagawa ko na itong task, I can just mark it off. And I'm done. So, maganda yung feature na to na pwede kang mag task or pwede kang gawa ng mga list ko. So, that's that's pretty much it. So, mostly na ginagamit kapag nagmamanage ka ng email ng client. We're done with the tips. Let's go to 10 email management skills everyone should learn to be more productive. So, pwede mo siyang, again, as a VA, it's important na malaman mo itong mga bagay na to para mas mabilis ka magtrabaho at mas organize ka pagdating sa email management. So, number one, pick your money-making emails and prioritize them. So, if you're doing this for the client, you have to understand ano ba yung business ni client, ano ba yung priority niya. You can even ask them kung ano ba yung mga emails na mas importante sa kanila na kailangan nilang replyan o basahin. So, that is very important. Kapag nire-review mo na yung emails ni client, you can actually identify na importante itong nag-send ng email na to or ito yung president ng company, then this is uh, important. So, kailangan mo siyang, uh, kailangan mo ma-reviewin lahat ng emails para malaman mo kung ano ba yung money-making emails ni client. Number two, touch every email just once. So remember the two-minute rule that I discussed earlier. Important yon, syempre, to save time. And as much as possible, of course, just touch the email once. Number three, don't treat your inbox as a to-do list. So you can have the option to schedule. Kailan mo gusto magbasa ng emails? Just a lot. Say, for example, um, 30 minutes uh, in the morning, 30 minutes lunchtime, and then 30 minutes afternoon. Ano yun? Para at least ma-manage ma mo lahat ng emails, mabasa mo yung mga importante at ma-delete mo yung mga hindi importante like mga so, uh, spams or subscriptions so kailangan mo siyang uh, kailangan mo iset ng rules yung mga ganong klaseng um, non-essential emails. Next, use just one app tool across all devices. So you can have an option, you can do a research Para sa akin sa Gmail ko, the only app that I'm using is Grammarly and Boomerang. 
yun lang yun. And um, I can easily uh, reply and schedule my re- email replies using Boomerang. At syempre, confident ako na maayos yung grammar ko at wordings ko kasi meron akong grammarly. Next, deal with email just twice a day. So, pwede yan kapag hindi ka naman talaga nakaka-receive ng maraming emails. Pero katulad ako, marami ako na-receive ng mga emails in a day. I have to schedule it at least three times a day para lang, alam mo yun, um, makita ko kung ano yung mga urgent emails. And syempre, ma- malagay ko sa do later yung mga emails na hindi naman essential or hindi naman urgent. Next, utilize template responses. So, yes, we've discussed this earlier. Just do your research. Maraming templates. Compile mo lang lahat ng templates. How to reply to this client. How to schedule a booking. Or how to reply uh, kapag magko-confirm ng mga orders. Depende talaga yan sa business ni client mo. And there are hundreds of clients in Google or in the internet. Kaya, work on the template creation. Next, tame your newsletter subscription. So, minsan, um, hindi mo may iwasan. May si client, may mga subscription yan. Most of the subscription ng mga clients ay yung mga apps and systems or websites or softwares na kailangan sa business. And talaga naman, nag-notify talaga sila sa email. Pag ganun, you just have to set a rule or create a label para sa specific. So, say for example, the, the client is using um, a CRM app and then notify yon pag kailangan ng bayaran yon o kailangan ng renew yung subscription so ginagawa ko na kagad siyang um, ng folder or label sa email ni client para and then I'm going to notify them or send a screenshot ng email since lalo na pag laging nasa labas si client hindi na naman yan magkakaroon ng time na magbabasa-basa mamaya hawak niya yung phone niya nasa labas siya mamaya di ba so hindi rin advisable yon so it's best to just inform to the client. Minsan, uh, ginagawa ko rin, nagliliva ko ng voicemail sa client para, kasi syempre, yung iba, hindi naman talaga makaka-response right away, makaka-response sa, sa text mo right away, or hindi naman talaga nila mababasa right away. So, mis- madalas, um, nag-iiwan ako ng voicemail sa client, lalo na pag urgent. Next, be mindful of what's going on in your inbox. So, just making sure, um, uh, Yung mga, in, yung mga inbox, yung mga emails, just make sure that all of them are carefully read and reviewed and sorted and organized. Next, send short emails only. So, mas may see yung response mo and direct to the point. Mas maganda kasi hindi naman, again, yung mga ka-email naman ng client mo, busy din naman sila. So, they won't really have all the time in the world to actually read your long response. So, the shorter, the better. Okay, and lastly, find replacement tools for things you'd otherwise do via email. So you can find tools in the Google and even ask the client what would work for them and that would actually help them, alam mo yun, yung makakahinga sila ng maluwag kasi alam nila na meron talagang magaling magmanage ng email nila. Again, I have to remind you guys, this uh, email management is easy task pero it involves a lot of trust. Kapag hinar ka ni client para i-manage yung email niya, ibig sabihin, magtitiwala siya sa iyo kasi ibibigay niya yung access access niya sa email and you're gonna read all of the emails. May it be about finances, may it be about business, may it be about a recreation or something. You have all the access to the emails and you can have the access to read and respond to them. So, importante na mapapagkatiwalaan ka pagdating sa email. And, I mean, just have to be very transparent. And, ang um, importante kasi alert ka na pag may nag-email and parang minsan nararamdaman mo na importante to pero hindi ko alam ko anong i-reply. Then, pwede mong i-send yung screenshot sa client or even tell the client that this person emailed and asking for something. And, minsan sasabihin ng client, okay, reply this or, alam ba yun, or no, you can wait or don't reply. I'll, I'll do it. So, pwede, pwede yun ginagawa ng mga clients yun. So, that's, those are the things that are important pagdating sa pagmamanage and I hope that all of this na, na natutunan nyo for today is something that you can use whenever you're applying as an 
admin kasi bisa pag VA admin ka it involves email management at least confident ka na na kayang kaya mong gawin ito so that's it congratulations to everyone and thank you so much sa lahat ng nakatapos ng ating email management one on one and I hope na this is another informative and productive moment or time for you guys so if you have any questions just make sure to leave it in the comments and once again congratulations you are now a virtual assist assistant admin and email management specialist wow. Congratulations sa lahat ng mga nakatapos ng video na to. Sobrang salamat sa inyo dahil alam ko this is an interesting topic. I hope marami kayong natutunan to provide a lot of trainings and informative vlogs para sa inyo. Tuloy-tuloy nyo lang ang panunood. At syempre, don't forget to leave a comment in the description box and the comments below so if you like this video don't forget to click the thumbs up and of course don't forget to share and subscribe leave a comment and once again this is your rockstar va sarah stay happy choose to be happy